guys, I'm so excited. I did my first Halloween craft of the spooky season, and obviously we're doing the borax skull. You wanna measure out your borax, and to put it simple, it's one fourth cup of borax for every full cup of water. Once your water is boiling, you put in your borax, it's kinda cloudy, you give it a stir, and it goes clear once it boils again. Take it off of the heat, and then all you have to do is put your item in. He's fully submerged now, he's super happy, he's gonna take a long nap, 20 hours is what I waited, and he turned out gorgeous. Let me try my hand at explaining this magic a little bit. This is probably one of the cooler examples of recrystallization. So what is happening here? When you take something like table salt, or in this case, borax, and you mix it with water, it will dissolve. And you can put a fair amount of this stuff into water until no more will dissolve. But you can change that if you just heat up the water. And that's why in this case, you boil this water to dissolve more and more and more of the borax into the water. Once you've got this water that's so full of this borax and it's hot, if you take away that heat, it can't keep all that borax dissolved anymore because it takes a certain amount of energy in order for it to stay dissolved in the water. That's why you had to heat it in the first place to get the extra dissolved. So as it's cooling down, that borax wants to come out of the water. It doesn't want to stay dissolved in the liquid anymore. It wants to become like solid crystals of borax again. And so it'll look for some kind of surface that it can adhere to, that any individual molecules can kind of settle on. And then the next molecule can settle, but in just the right orientation that it starts to form this very regular structure. And that is what gives you the crystal. This is no different from crystals that grow in like caves and caverns naturally occurring. The slower you let it cool down, the bigger those crystals can become and the nicer they're going to look because as this water cools down and that borax is trying to come back out of the water, if there's enough heat left in the water, it kind of has options, right? Like it's got enough energy that it can hang out in the water until it finds just the right spot to settle in and make a nice crystal. But if the water is losing that heat really, really quickly, like if you put it in the fridge, say, instead of leaving it on the counter, then those borax molecules don't have so many options. They're like, I gotta, I gotta come out. I gotta come out right now. I gotta go. And so they'll just start coming out in any kind of orientation and shape that they can. And you don't get as nice of crystals. But ultimately, once the water cools down back to like room temperature, all that extra borax that you put in there has come back out of the water because it doesn't have the energy to stay in the water anymore. And because you put this lovely surface, like this skull with all its little nooks and crannies and places for things to settle on it, into that solution, the borax just kind of crystallizes all over the skull. And then you get this lovely, gorgeous, crystal-coated skull. Thank you, Damien Hurst. So maybe a question that may have popped into your head is, well, wait, so what happens if I just don't put anything in this water? Like, let's say I put all this borax in the water and I boil it and I take it off the heat. What's going to happen? Well, in most cases, what's going to happen is as it cools down, the extra borax that you put in there is still eventually going to find its way back out of the solution. Either it'll just start to, the molecules will just start to come together on their own in the solution, or they'll stick to the sides of the container and they'll start to grow from there. But in some cases, I don't know if this is true of borax, but it's true of other things. What can happen is kind of nothing. The stuff that the extra stuff you dissolved will just stay dissolved and dissolved with it is kind of like the energy that you used to get it dissolved. A good example of this is sodium acetate and what happens when you have a super saturated solution of sodium acetate. The amount of stuff that you can dissolve in say a cup of water depends on how hot or cold that cup of water is. But there's a limit. There's always a limit. That depends on the temperature. So if you raise the temperature of that cup of water, you can raise that limit of stuff you have dissolved in it. And then once you lower that temperature back down, you have lowered the limit. But in some cases, like sodium acetate, even though you've lowered the limit, the sodium acetate will stay dissolved. It won't actually come out right, right away. And this is what's called super saturation, where you have more stuff dissolved than the limit of what, could, what should be dissolved. And that's where you get cool things like hot ice pillars and the little experiment where you put a little seed crystal in it and it just like explodes into a whole flask of crystals and it, it steams. It's really cool, but it doesn't always happen, unfortunately. It's actually kind of hard to make that happen because in most cases, what's going to happen is as you're 
solution cools down, whatever extra you had dissolved in it is just going to find virtually anything to stick to and start coming out as a solid. Sometimes it'll do this still and it'll look pretty and you can get really nice, big, juicy crystal rocks, but it definitely doesn't look as pretty as when you like let it crystallize on like a skull or something. That's pretty cool. I do. I do think that that's pretty cool. Borax is also not the only thing you can do this with. You can do it with sugar, but it's a little harder and you need a lot more sugar. But I hope you enjoyed that explanation. If it wasn't clear, leave the questions in the comments and I'll try again. But thanks for watching to the end. If you enjoyed this one, appreciate it. Hit that like button. Until next time, Skim Thug.